Good evening, everyone. It is Wednesday, May the 26th. This is a meeting of the Marina Advisory Committee. We'll start with uh, announcements, open session, and public comments. Are there any? Well, uh, <clears throat> I had a uh, little hearing with the select man about the rowing rendezvous in September, and uh, they uh, approved my uh, request to use uh, Mail Beach uh, and the town ramp. So uh, uh, we're going to have the eighth almost annual uh, Wellfleet Rowing Regatta. Oh, rendezvous, I'm sorry. Uh, I think it's going to be the 25th of September. Uh, we'll get you more details as I figure them out, but uh, looks good. Well, that's good news, Walter. Glad you're yeah, carrying people on. have been asking, so. Glad yeah. you're carrying on the tradition. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep it going for a couple more years. <laughs> Well, if you need any help with it, Walter, let me know. I would need a chase boat. Uh, we were out rowing the other day, and uh, it was pretty gnarly, and there was no chase boat. And that was one of the comments was, should have had a chase boat. Uh, and not, we usually have good weather, but, you know, sometimes people get in trouble. So uh, chase boat would be good. <clears throat> okay. Are there any other announcements? Okay, uh, we have the uh, minutes from April 28th. And um, take a minute to review them if you haven't had time. Okay, has everybody had time enough to review the minutes? Yeah, I just had a kind of question here. It said John and Martha raised the issue of whether or not a mooring permit holder is required to install their mooring during the season. Um, I'm just trying to remember exactly at what context that was in. You know, were we talking about, how, how are we discussing that? Whether a marina should put it in or whether the, <clears throat> A, person, a private person should put it in or? John? Yeah. Can you um, help us with that? Uh, uh, well, actually I kind of had the same question. I, I, I've, I've gotten two different answers down at the Harbor Master's office. Uh, Jamie told me that I had to have the mooring in. Uh, let me get back on track here, hang on. Mm -hmm. uh, so that I can be seen and see everybody. Uh, we can see and hear you, John. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and then I, I believe it was Dave who told me that he th he thought uh, that I didn't need to. I, I'm trying to remember what I did last year. Um, Will, can you help us out on that? Yeah. What what um uh what what's the the context of that um well, the context like uh, in my case anyways in the event that i were to get that space i had last year and the year before um would i still be required to have my mooring in place of course this year i'm going to need it at the you know beginning of september but so yes uh, of course you would because you do need a home to go to if, if you're a transient slip um, the only way that you can be transient is if you have another home. Um, so you, if you're coming off um, your mooring, that would allow you to be a, a home transient person. But if you don't have a mooring, then you'd be just like any other visitor, which would be like a nightly or... or oh, I, I've got you. I understand. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, but in that same context, they, they could have or in a different context, actually, they could have been confused by the question as well, because um, in our in all of our um, rules and regs, you have a year where you like your slip or your mooring that you don't have to 
you have to pay for it, but you don't have to participate in it. Right. Uh, you know, so that, that could have been the confusion with that issue. But yeah, that anyone, that might have been it. Yeah. So anyone that um, is going to uh, fortunately get a, a transient slip would be required to be on a slip waiting list and have a, a, a permanent home in, in the, the basin there. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, um, okay, well, that, that that satisfies my question. I, I, how about uh, it satisfies mine too? So, Will, if you if you have a mooring permit, do you have to put it in every year? You're supposed to, except you have a year grace period. A one year grace, yeah. Okay. John, I think when we had that discussion, I had told you I have mine in every year. Uh, Wealthy Marine puts it in for me. I pay. I pay through them. Uh, they they provide the mooring for me, and I pay for it. Yeah, I do the same thing, except with base sales. You know, they they maintain it. They put it in and take it out. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, but I, I pay the town every year without fail for the mooring anyway. Are there any other um, comments on the uh, minutes? Yeah, I have one. Uh, in the uh, Marina Concerns, it says uh, the old firehouse with protruding rusty nails needs to be replaced. And I think that should be old fire hose, not yes. the old firehouse. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Walter. <laughs> I remember the old old firehouse down down by uh, what is it Fox and Crow? That was that was an old rusty firehouse. It sure was. <laughs> yeah, and we replaced that one. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, thank you for that correction. Any other um, comments on the minutes? Okay, hearing none. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay, um, is there a second? I'll second. Walter. Okay, um, the vote, Walter. Aye. Martha. Aye. Dave. Aye. Kevin. Aye. John. Aye. And Joe, aye, okay. All right. Um, Moving on, um, John Real from the NRAB is going to join us. John, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, uh, we can hear you. Can you well, hear me? I'm here. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Um, John requested to be put on and um, sent along three documents, which we got out on Monday. So, John, why don't you give us an overview? of um, your goals, your objectives for tonight? Well, what I would like to do, Joe, is to um, explain our, um, the project we have in mind, um, suggest that uh, our two committees need to work, work together on this and to ask uh, your support at uh, town meeting. Okay. So why don't so, uh, you um, get, give uh, us an overview uh, of the project? Right. For for some time, uh, we've been interested in at NRAB in two issues. One is to to find a way of of doing the dredging, uh, which is uh, less expensive than uh, our current situation, and that is under our control so we can decide when when to when to dredge or not to dredge and the second problem is that with sea level rise uh, our salt marshes are at risk of flooding so we would like to put in place processes to build up the salt marshes and it turns out that we think that those two problems can be worked on together that if we found a way to uh, take the dredging spoils in the harbor as we now have 
disperse them and uh, pump them so that they can be taken by the the flow of uh, the ties in, uh, up going up Duck Creek and go go on to the Duck Creek marshes. That would that would solve both problems. Uh, uh, the first step in um, working at this uh, pair of issues was to get a report done that uh, characterized and discussed what uh, black custard is. We don't like the term black mayonnaise because that is used um, to describe some uh, materials which have harmful components to it. The black custard, which is the dredgeable material in, in the harbor, has no harmful components. Uh, this was work done by the Center for Coastal Studies. It consists of silt and, it, and the uh, uh, silt uh, uh, agglomerated together or flocculated together. I, I, I need to use the word flocculate with um, natural um, algae in the harbor. So it's a purely natural uh, product. And therefore, it, we could imagine it going onto a salt marsh and benefiting the salt marsh um, uh, in, so, in so doing. So what we now propose is a plan of work that goes from this basic science and works its way through to where we have a, a project which actually has some um, engineering in it. Um, we, we want to test methods to extract black, black custard from the North Channel. Uh, the same methods would, we think, move uh, be, be suitable for the other um, dredgeable areas in the harbor. We want to, um, that would probably done, be done by some sort of suction dredging. Uh, the next step would be to take that black custard material and de-agglomerate it, uh, deflocculate it, um, which would probably be done with uh, some sort of commercial form of a wearing blender. In my opinion, that's the critical step in this process, is if we can get the black custard deagglomerated so it's back to the, the same sort of fine particles it was when the material came into the harbor, then we'd have no problem about putting it into um, the Duck Creek tides and letting the tides carry the material up, up to the marshes. So we, we wouldn't be pumping material up to the marshes. We'd only pump material to um, where the where it could catch the tides. Um, critical to this is we begin also to develop um, an engineering and permitting understanding of what would need to happen. And so uh, what I'm in, in envision is working um, if the town meeting approves the project, working with uh, two companies, one who could do some of the basic science that I just outlined, and the other who would be able to take that basic science and turn it into a practical uh, engineering pro uh, a project. Um, I, I think I also feel it's important, as I said, that our two committees can work together on this um, because if this is going to be useful, it's going to end. It's going to stop being a science project and start being something practical down down the road. So that's the basic concept. Uh, the twenty five thousand, which is um, requested from town meeting, should be able to get us to the point of view of knowing if we have something that's practical and what the steps are uh, to be practical in the future. And I would be glad to try to answer any questions or listen to the discussion. Um, that's up to you. Okay, questions, discussion? Uh, yeah, I, I have a couple of questions. Are we talking about, or it, we're not talking about the, the phases of dredging that are coming up this fall and next fall. And, uh, I, I should have said that from the start. All of this 
hap- at each location, all of this happens after the current dredging has been completed. Okay. Then uh... and, and I I could just say say beyond that, I think this would have to be done every year or two or three. And part of the work we 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 do would be to test that because I'm concerned that if the black custard builds up builds up it compresses the material at the bottom and that may be that make that material more difficult to deflocculate but the current the current dredging has to has to be completed before any of this works so this would be part of a maintenance dredging plan basically you could call it that yes which we have to have in place anyway um, because the state won't get up off of the money for the, uh, uh, the the second and third phase of the dredging unless we do have a maintenance dredging program in place, is my understanding. Yeah, and that would fit in um, with what our engineers have told us looking down the road that maintenance dredging would probably have to be done about every three years. Really, that that infrequently. Hmm. That's what they said. I think that's a lot better than fifteen or twenty. That's for sure. Oh, that yeah, that's true. <laughs> hmm. um, now, as far as bringing the the uh, material and letting the tide carry it into Duck Creek, what would be what would prevent the tide from carrying it right back out again into the marina? It, that would be that would be part of the natural process, but you you would have you if you if you think just about the north channel, and you think about the 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 the, the tide carrying the black custard particles approaching that the, the that channel, most of the water goes straight down Duck Creek. It's only a small proportion of the water that goes into the north channel. So even if 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 you, we take some dredge material and we 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 put it into the into Duck Creek and it doesn't end up in the marshes, the majority of it will still continue at the next tide to go toward the marshes, not 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 go into the North Channel. And I think um, do you, you to, to be fair, we, would you sorry, excuse me on a tide cycle. I mean, would it be relative to the tides? I mean, would you be doing it on moon tides? You know, you think, or that is a, a that's a good question. I I think the project has to answer that that I'm proposing has to answer that question. I can't answer it now. Yeah. Is the flow of the um, particles that go towards Duck Creek going to change when the North Channel and the back basin is, or the back, you know, the um, uh, the, uh, the the slippage area is all all dredged. Is that going to change anything? You know, as far as your study goes, and and how the flow of the water will affect where that goes. Um. The answer is basically no, and part of my thinking in, in saying that is I, I expect that at some point in doing this project, we're going to need to have to do some sort of modeling of exactly what's happening to the flow of particles and what's happening to the flow of water under different circumstances. Um, that sort of modeling has been done as part of the Herring Creek the Herring River, not Herring Creek, Herring River project. And uh, I, I think we will probably have to do something similar in order to, to really answer that that question. And how about basically the Mayo... What, basically, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, and how about the Mayo Creek project and how that would affect it as far as having more water in that slippage area? Is that going to change that flow? And you know, the whole dynamic of where you're speaking. Uh, I personally think that if the Mayo Creek marsh were restored, that would 
that would benefit the, this project because it would it would pr produce an additional flow of water naturally right. that would push the black custard material out of the marina out of the north channel over toward uh, the flow into duck creek walter you were on the duck creek uh, committee what are your thoughts on yeah the bayo creek committee uh, creek. yeah i agree with john i think uh opening up that uh that culvert and and building a real uh you know connecting that marsh again to the, to the rest of the harbor would would be a benefit i mean there was a bridge there 100 years ago and then they you know filled it in and, and blocked that off uh but uh i think the the gain and flow there plus you know it goes both ways it'll go on the incoming tide it'll push that that material up into that marsh and as you know when the when the tide comes in it kind of hesitates and a lot of that stuff drops out and then the tide turns and goes the other way right. so i think that would help deposit material up into that marsh and also flow towards duck creek and around the corner there uh, going the other way to push stuff out. I, I think it would be a, a, quite a benefit for that uh, Mayo Creek project to, uh, to get going. The other concern I was have, at least I'm, I'm, I'm thinking ahead, is um, the maintenance plan. Does that have any criteria that's going to conflict with what's being proposed as far as where it should go and 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 all of that i that's the only other question i have do we know that do we know what the maintenance plan is yet do we have any specifics john real um to help answer that um do you have a time frame in mind when when the the companies complete their assignment and we would have some answers? Um, I, all right, what, what, let me think that through by talking through the process. The process is that uh, uh, we have town meeting in about a month, uh, a little over a month. Uh, 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 I would like to have a, an RFP prepared to go out fairly quickly after that. And we would identify a couple of companies who could help us by doing the work, one company or organization doing the science, the other company or organization uh, doing the engineering steps. Um, that I don't think I'm unduly optimistic to say that should be done. That could be completed by the end of this calendar year. Then the, ne then the next step would be to actually design uh, a, 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 pro a project or a procedure that could, that could actually be implemented. And I'm not sure how long that would take. That's looking pretty far down the road. So if we're looking at about three years to do maintenance dredging, I think what I hear you saying is um, the entire project may not be completed at that point. I think three years is too long. I'm, I'm saying, um year year and a half is not unreasonable okay just just a thought and and i don't want to be a negative dancy here uh all of this is theoretical um so i don't know how far that'll go with maintenance dredge and when you come in with if they get all that black stuff out of there you might have clear sand, so you might be able to pump that up on the beach with a pump dredge, something that's going to be concrete instead of theoretical uh, at this point in time. I'm not saying it can't work, 
but again, I, I, I think the state's going to be looking at uh, something more concrete that you can actually remove that material out of there while you're dealing with, you know, which, which I think it's a great idea. But again, as we all know, there's a lot of material there. There's a lot of material there. You're talking about the black custard, right? Yeah, whatever you want to call it. I yeah. still call it mayonnaise. Yeah, whatever, yeah. But looking down the road, um, if, if this project revealed that it could be done, it possibly could result in a lot of dollar savings to the town in the future. A absolutely, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that. But again, everything that would being discussed is theoretical at this point in time. What's I mean, didn't, uh, I, didn't I read in the report that uh, something similar has been done down south and it has worked, John? Yes, that's called um, the, another term for what we're proposing is in their deposition, and that that has been done in um, other um, uh, estuaries further south. Walter, the the the, the where thin layer deposition has gotten into into problems is if the material was not that was being put onto the marshes was not deagglomerated and that's why i put a a big emphasis on on our ability to disperse the dredging sp uh, spoils to, I, I i i think it's possible but we have to show it it is that we we take the black the black custard particles and return them to a state which is as fine, as small as the material which is actually coming into the um, marine area from Down Harbor. If if we can't do that, so that to be one of the that should be one of the earlier tests. Then then the, this project uh, uh, would be uh, doubtful. Any other questions or comments? I just um, have a little comment on uh, the modeling thing these days, which is, you know, computers are used to uh, predict electronically, basically, the flow of water and how it interacts with things. And there's been some crazy developments in this field recently. Uh, I was just reading a thing about, well, they're using it on boat bottoms, but they use it on all kinds of things. And they break down the particles into tiny cells, and they're using millions and millions of these cells to to track velocities and uh, disturbances. And and the modeling that they can do these days is is extremely accurate, or much more accurate than even a few years ago. So uh, you know some of the theoretical stuff that they have to do is, will probably be done like that, and and uh, it might be you know pretty accurate. For I, flows and you know effects of different configurations. I have a um, <laughs> what's been done so far to you know that tells you that the flow is into Duck Creek rather than into the North Channel. You know, given that there's so much stuff in the north ended up in the North Channel as it is. Well, well, basically, you just you just. Um, at, at high high tide, you, um, the 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 water levels are the same in both the North Channel and in Duck Creek, um, the same elevations, but there's a lot more volume upstream in Duck Creek. So that's uh, that's the basis of of that. Um, of, of my that statement, North Channel just isn't that big. Seems, seems, it seems to me we'd want to be awfully sure, you know, 
maybe using methods like uh, Walter was talking about to make sure that we know that that in fact is happening. Otherwise we could end up with the same situation all over again with more material ending up in the, in, in the marina slips. Um, fair, fair point, fair point, I've noted it. Uh, another question I have is, uh, did you ever, were, were, were you ever able to meet up with uh, Steve Swain and, and discuss his ideas for? Yes, yes. And I'll, I'll just say that I think he's got some very interesting ideas. Um, I support what he's doing. I think it'd be, I think my reaction is it'd be great if we had a couple of, couple of options for the town. So I think any help you can give him, you should do. Sure. Yeah, he, he appeared before the committee. I think it was a year ago, wasn't it, John? Yeah, a year over a year. And, and yeah, he had actually, on his own initiative, gone to uh, Center for Coastal Studies with samples. And uh, he dried some out and brought it to the meeting to demonstrate that once it's dry, it doesn't smell. Mm -hmm. But I, I was actually, as you may recall, when I first was got on the committee, I was a an advocate of using suction dredging in the first place, and and uh, um, you know wondered about uh, you know pumping it over onto Indian Neck. Uh, I think the Whitman property is still owned by the town, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Can't do uh, that. Yeah. You know, and, th and that material would have uh, commercial value if it weren't being used to to you know, up into the. Well, I don't want to be. But I, I'm just saying that suction dredging, I think, is a viable option. You know, for maintenance dredging. It would seem that um, the sum that the NRB. Uh, NRAB um, is looking for the 25,000, um, you know, uh, might well be worth it to provide those answers if it could potentially turn into a project that would save the town a lot of money and having to dredge the spoils and transport them seven miles out to the bay and, uh, and, and the, the, the large expense associated with that. Yeah, I've, I've always been curious about the uh, cost benefit of that when you have, you know, two large diesel tugs uh, burning fuel, carting this stuff 14 miles out, uh, where you instead could have, you know, some small diesel powered pumps pumping it to a place where it could be used. Especially once the bulk of it's done, I you know, I, I, I get that we can't put 850,000 square yards of the stuff on, on Indian Neck, which is too bad, but um, uh, for the maintenance dredging, I think it does have a lot of merit. Again, remember, there's gonna be some clear sand in that, in the maintenance, because you're not gonna have as much buildup as you've had over the years. Yeah, uh, case in point is up on the other side of the breakwater. That's all filling in with clear sand. Good point. Occasionally, not all the time, John. Yeah, I mean, there won't be as much, like you say, and, and uh, the suction apparatus will pull up some sand with it because, you know, we're no longer going to be dealing with, you know, eight to 16 feet deep silt. But, you know, when we're doing maintenance dredging. Well, wasn't there a talk about getting a dredge? For the, for the town or? Yeah. Th there was, um, the, the cost analysis really didn't, didn't weigh out in that. I um, think it's a bad idea. So yeah. I, 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 I've talked about this um, with, with him before and I, I think there's a couple aspects of this. Um, first of all, uh, townwide, because we're thinking townwide here also with restoring uh, Duck Creek and sea level rise in that creek. Because you can, it's very apparent 
in in the creek that um, it's not naturally building up as as Blackfish Creek will um, because of the the like the railroad dike and the you know the flow into that creek. So it's not keeping up with with the water level rise right now. Um, so I, I think as a, as the town goes, this this kind of experiment that could possibly look into a way to um, to build up the levels of Duck Creek might might be a really great benefit to it as as the town is currently looking into other alternatives for uh, armoring properties or or anything else that may need to be done along the Duck Creek edges. Um, you know, if the creek builds up, we have a stronger uh, whole ecosystem in that. And I do know that when we finally get down to the real sand, um, we're going to see an amazing cost savings on dredging anyway. We'll be able to use the county um, and the suction dredge, which is extremely uh, cheaper than um, what we're currently doing. Um, but this, in the short term, I, I do know too that you know, with the government and these kind of permits too, they also want you to look into alternatives to uh, typical aspects. So in the shorter term where we may not have pure sand, where the disposal may be iffy and what they allow us to do, this could be a good alternative to, you know, kind of in your mind, almost vacuum off a top layer um, or, or just good, Good overall uh, science practice on, on how to get that done. Um, you know, so this this could be a really good um, this could be a really good project, or or they could find out that you know it, it's not going to work. Um, I, I know really you know, large scale projects using uh, the kind of dredge foils that we have have been done in in like southern Rhode Island to rebuild the marshes. So that, that's a positive thing. I mean, that was a really major scale project down in Integrate, if I'm saying that right, where they actually replanted on top of that, but it was dealing with um, the flow of these creeks and estuaries. So this could be a good, um, a, a really good faith act for the town for its own benefit, but in the short term, it, it could benefit us with that. And then when we get that clean sand, you know, that's going to be gold around here. You know, when we get that, that's, that's really, that's our gold. So to rebuild everything. Another thought um, in that avenue is that um, when we do look at uh, maintenance stretching three years or so down the road, we, were, we will be looking to the state for considerable funding. And I think it is to our benefit to be able to show them that we pursued an alternative. Uh, even if it didn't work, we acted in good faith and, and pursued an alternative at much less expense. So that might also be a benefit. Yeah, we'll learn something, whether it works or not. I mean, there'll be a benefit, I think, to that study, you know. Yeah. John Real, do you have anything else? Well, uh, two things. One is it's clear, I had thought this beforehand, but it's clear from this discussion that uh, we have to work very closely together to make this successful. And second, I would ask if you would um, consider making a, uh, making or not a recommendation to town meeting to uh, approve the warrant article. Uh huh. Okay. Um, do we have a motion in that regard? Yeah, I'll make a motion that uh, we uh, vote to approve the that uh, the article that John Real mentioned. Uh, article twenty to town meeting, I should say. I think that would be Article Twenty. Correct, John. I don't know the, the the actual number. It um, I'll 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 be sure to work with Rebecca that any vote that you have goes to the right article. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, is uh, there a second? Is there a second on that motion? I think I can pull that up. Uh, uh, Article twenty. It is. Yes. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay, John will second. Um, the motion is that the Marina Advisory Committee recommends that Article 20 uh, on the uh, town warrant um, be passed um, in support of the NRAB's plan. Um, any further discussion? Okay, why don't we, we do a roll call. Walter? Aye. Okay. Um, Martha? Aye. David? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Okay, Joe, aye. And John? Aye. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> John, you have your, have your support. Uh, and, I have, um, uh, if it works, John, and um, you're going to patent and market it, we'll take 10% off the top. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your support. Um, as I've said, there's work here for, for both our committees, and uh, I'll be in touch with you, Joe, about um, where I think we could use some help. Sure, please do. And thank you for coming and presenting this, John. Okay, take care now. Bye. You too. Take care. Okay, moving ahead. Uh, now we have Harbor Master Report. Will? Yeah, so uh, first thing I have to uh, apologize for my absence last meeting. Um, I was dealing with, I was uh, for the um, select board. Sorry, can you hear? Oh, um, yeah, so it'll be tepid, but you can warm it to the mic. What's going on in the background? Uh, it's not real somehow. Yeah, it's still connected. Can, can you be muted? I'll see if I can mute him. Yeah. Yeah. There. Okay. All right, so yeah, I have to uh, apologize for missing uh, last meeting. I was called before the select board to um, make sure our, our budget and warrant articles were um, well tidied up in uh, most of these. And there, there's been a lot of meetings. So um, that's where I was at the last meeting. So I do have to apologize for that. Um, speaking of which, we did place the uh, new response vessel um, on, the, on the warrant for that. Um, our budget was approved um, by everyone, FinCom, um, the TA and, and the select board. Um, we took the all-terrain forklift off of that, um, off of this warrant uh, in the cost cutting measures that they were trying to approach. Um, you know, there is a possibility of, uh, of another special town meeting in the fall or going for that next year. Um, but at this point, uh, with that one, we felt uh, aiding in, um, you know, helping everyone cut, cut costs everywhere where the DPW has been coming in so strong. And, and that was kind of the agreement that we made um, that we take it off the warrant if they continued the great help that they've been giving us, uh, putting out all the docs and taking them all in. So, you know, if, if, I mean, it would be good to have something to lift some things down at the harbor so we don't have to call them for everything. But if, um, if this works out the way it has been, you know, we could save 65 grand, um, you know, save some tax dollars and put it somewhere else. So um, otherwise, uh, yeah, the, the vessel and the budget were approved and put on the warrant. So we're going ahead with them. Um, secondly, the, the marina is open uh, full time now. We're open seven days a week. Um, currently, the hours are six to six. Um, probably extended after this weekend. We'll see how the crowds go. We're trying to play it by year until it really, I mean, it's been busy, but not necessarily extremely busy with boaters. So 
Um, we're trying to play play the boating scene by year and just adjust our hours continuing on to that. Um, and I think I'll just open it up for questions. Now, are the uh, commercial boats supposed to be off the pier at some point? Uh, yeah. Line up? Hmm? Yep, so they're getting off. They're slowly trickling out. Uh, some of them have dates, um, finishing up some welding. You know, there's been a couple backups with the bigger ones. Right now, we're starting to push for uh, trailers and things to start to be removed as, as usual. We're kind of a little more, uh, being a little more gracious this year with the time frame um, where, you know, the DPW has been down a bunch of times to sweep and Things seem to be flowing pretty smoothly down there, um, you know, with opening everything up. So, and cooperation. So, um, you know, I, I, I see that most of them should probably be in in the next uh, week or so. Yeah, just just curious, you know. I mean, they are going. I see they're I see they're moving. Yeah, sure. yeah, they're all. You know, it's always a little slow, but um, you know, they kind of play it by as soon as the uh, the markets pick up and everything starts going. Yeah. You know, they're a bit wacky <laughs> this year, so yeah. So, yeah. Any um, any questions? Yeah, I want to I want to compliment Will actually on on the progress this year. I think in the past ten years, I haven't seen the harbor this close to being ready. Um, you know, even. Some of the little things that we talked about, like the boards down on B dock, have been repaired, and the water's on, and um, you know that uh, that hose, uh, the fire hose that we talked about, is shored up um, by the fuel dock. Um, all good stuff, you know. Thank you. Kudos, man. Yeah, thank you. Um, we've had everyone out there working like crazy, trying to trying to nail all this down and find any little thing we can and, and mix the big projects with the little ones and you know just yep. trying to tighten, tighten the ship up a little bit yep okay um next item is marina concerns um there were several the first one has been answered regarding a mooring permit um the second one was the fuel dock. Um, any chance of putting a rubber, solid rubber bumper on that? Well, I, I know last year when after the half of the season, the nails started coming out. Yeah, um, I, I, you know, it, it wouldn't be necessarily a bad idea. I don't, it, it would be, it would be pretty hard to do with it in the water. Um, that'd be the only problem with that. Uh, drilling and lagging, lagging through the rubber bumpers on that is kind of difficult when you're, you know, working on it in the water. Um, you know, and, and I did watch um, some things from last week and I see there was, you know, several issues with those uh, docks and, you know, maybe that's something we need to look at in the future is uh, replacing them. I mean, they were, I believe those ones were come, came from P-Town, they were used docks, um, yeah. you know, so instead of uh you know the possibility instead of spending a lot of money on them we might be able to use them elsewhere um i.e public docks or something like that um and transfer it over to a new fuel dock or you know start looking at uh, you know planning for total upgrades mm -hmm. okay the um next item um John had raised about the excessive speed in the channel, uh, frequent violations of the no wake rule. And I think everybody had a comment about that and jumped in. So I think um, John and Kevin and Martha spoke about it. If you guys wanna pick up from um, your comments of last week. One of them was to, to um, do what was done years ago, which was to put a no wake sign on the breakwater. Um, so those who spoke about it last week, you wanna jump in? John, 
Uh, sure. Um, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I do remember that no wake sign. It was quite a long time ago. Um, and, and also putting uh, the no wake buoy out opposite the breakwater, um, you know, just to as double as reinforcement there, you know, a good, decent sized visible buoy along with the sign. Um, because really people don't need to be doing 20 knots inside the breakwater. Uh, especially with all the kayakers around and, and uh, paddle boarders and, you know, people that really don't know their way around. It's, it's, uh, you know, we're kind of playing with fire by, I, I think, you know, by uh, leaving that small no wake buoy halfway into the, uh, into the L pier. Um, I, th I think we can improve on that. The other thing I was wondering, I, I know that, you know, like help is tight, but uh, I think uh, Will's got another little boat in operation there. I just wondering, you know, at, at random times when it's really busy, if we had a presence out there on the water, you know, all it would take be a couple times for somebody to be warned. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, you always drive through East Ham going 40 miles an hour because you know that somebody's going <laughs> to nail you. That's true. Yeah, that's... um. That's one thing I forgot to mention is that we uh, we do have three boats running now, which, I, you know, I mean, that's, we have three oh, yeah. boats running. I mean, granted, they're barely running, but they're running. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we can, um, hey, you know, they're all eager to play with the boat. So if we put them out on the boats, uh, everyone out on the boats, I, I don't think uh, anyone will be too upset about taking boat rides and hanging out in that channel. And, you know, I, I think um, just our presence out there slows a lot of people down. So um, same with kind of, you know, patrolling the Jeremy's Point area, you know, taking a daily, um, daily patrol out there. Um, you know, just kind of, you know, plus we're seen. Everyone sees yeah. us out there. It looks Let good. them know you're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and John's, John's <laughs> point of the kayakers is, is very important because I've been, you know, they pop out in back of that breakwater. You don't even know they're there until you're on top of them. You know, they don't they don't know where they're going. No, <laughs> and if you've got a fairly good sized boat, you know, and you're you're up on a plane and you come down, it's like they're, they're right there. <laughs> Of course, they need to be educated too about the channel. You know, it's not, it's not, you know, that's a two way street there. You know, people on, on power boats have to be aware, but the people in the kayaks have to be yeah. aware also. Yeah, a little common sense goes a long way. Um, do any of the uh, Harbor Master boats have blue lights? <laughs> not currently. No, we're, we're lucky to have lights on them right now. <laughs> I might have some kicking around if you want them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that they make a difference. I I, uh, I remember coming through the, when I first bought my boat, I was coming through the Cape Cod Canal with her, and uh, a powerboat went screaming by uh, near the sandwich, and, and a patrol boat just nosed out and turned on its blue lights for a moment. And, that uh, powerboat settled right down. <laughs> yeah. That's all it took. I guarantee that our new boat will have blue lights and a uh, loud hailer as well. So even just seeing the boat with the blue lights on it, you know, just that <laughs> whole visual, you know. Yeah. Well, you like we step... Pleasant Bay and, the, you know, those guys, they got the uniforms and the blue lights and the whole deal, you know. Will, are you, are you receptive to putting um, a no wake sign for this season uh, at the edge of the um, breakwater? Uh, wh where was it? Right at the, right at the piling, right at the, uh, at the marker at the end of the breakwater. Yeah, just behind it. I know that we can put it somewhere near there, but we can't touch um, the marker. Uh, that's, a, that's a federal uh, navigation aid, so we cannot do anything with that we can't even paint it um yeah so as i recall it was be it was below that and out front of it right at the the very tip mm -hmm. i don't think it was touching it like and halfway between that. it was like halfway between the breakwater and can 16. 
That was about where that marker has been. Mm -hmm. That was the only one, yeah. Where where it's been traditionally, but you know. Well, they're talking about the sign. Well, I recall the sign actually being written on the breakwater itself as well. No wake. I have pictures of that when I was a little boy, where it said "No wake," right on before they replaced the, um, the you know the um, the beacon on the breakwater. And I don't know, is that federal too, Will? Yeah. 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 So that's something we can't touch. I wonder if we could ask them. Yeah, we could try. Um, they uh, they were going to send out patrol boats to come change the light bulb last time. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know the the um, I think Kevin, you you commented on this too. My recollection is that the sign was below the beacon, not touching it fastened to the rocks okay. one back about 10 12 years ago i mean inside inside from the beacon or actually below it below it no because at high tide nowadays on a on a plus tide the breakwater is almost totally submerged yeah well you could put it behind the beacon on top you know another thing we could do is in, instead of um one no week buoy we could have two one on each side of the channel I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, the logistics of having a sign on the breakwater is probably a little crazy. The um, that's old school. The present one, the no way the print is quite small. And I question whether or not some people even see it. Well, those cans are pretty universal, there, right? Two boys yeah. might be a good idea. At least, you know, people will know something's going on. Yeah, the the the, the cans are pretty pretty standard. Um, yeah. One thing we also wanted to do was try and order a can for uh, Old Saw too. The the science buoy never came uh, last year. That was going to come on it. That was going to have that uh, hazard on it. So um, we could try to purchase another another one or two of them. Um, with it and try to get a couple uh, just new no wake buoys. You know? I, I think that'd be a great idea. Get a couple no wake buoys and then get the, the buoy for old saw. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of the buoy for old saw, what about that rock off of uh, the big old rock off Indian Neck? That's yeah. everybody usually knows that. What are you talking about? The one off Lieutenant Island? Blue rock, rock, the big one? Blue rock. Is that blue rock? Yeah. yeah. It's blue. It's big. It's huge. It's right out for Lieutenant. Yeah. Tell my number yeah. 10. Yeah. But, but at high tide, it's covered up. Yeah. They used to put a buoy on that, too, but they haven't for years. And some local people put a couple things out there a couple years ago, too. But I think most everybody knows that's there. I mean, nobody goes in that close because it's pretty shallow in there. There's a lot of rocks in there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure rock. That's kind of like heading in towards uh, Middle Meadows. There, it's it's kind of a, a rock field, you know. Like, you know, use some. Yeah. You get inside Boy Rocks, and there's it's rocky in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good place to stay out of. Okay, um, the last item in the concern category, uh, Walter expressed the need for staff members to be stationed outside of the office by the boat launching area, assisting boaters, directing boat launching traffic, maintaining order, etc. That was the last item I had. Walter? Well, yeah, I mean, not all the, day, all the time every day, but, you know, on a busy weekend, I, you know, it's good to have a presence down there because uh, as you guys know, and you, well, you've seen it all, people are People get crazy down there. And uh, just to have somebody there with a uniform on saying, hey, you know, calm down or, hey, what can I do to help you out? Just, you know, on a Saturday, busy Saturday or Sunday afternoon, it, you know, not not a permanent person, but just just when it's necessary, basically. I mean, you remember the, the accident that, that happened last year when the guy was backing his boat down and the lady tried to scoot between him and the ramp and, and got nailed, uh, you know, Stuff like that. 
So one one thing that's also been um, suggested is um, a couple of yield signs coming from Commercial Street at the boat ramp, or the not the boat ramp, but you know the the road, you know, crossing it where the boats come up and down the trailers. Yeah, um, where yeah. the white stripe is, you know, a couple of yield signs, or maybe one in the middle, or or somewhere around there, um, to kind of make people look up and be aware that you know it's it's um, it's not just a drag strip. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, just kind of, you know, uh, uh, where, um, what I can say is that a lot of emphasis is going to be placed on uh, people being out there this year on those docks. Um, we're we're going to have, we're, we're going to have big problems with um, uh, the tides, uh, where out front has water, out back doesn't. You know, we're telling the people in the slips, it's the same as last year. Don't even count on anything being different. We all know what's going to happen. Um, we all know that. Oh, I, you know, I can't. Do, I, you know, I can't. We all know what's going to happen. So um, that's going to be a big emphasis this year, and it's it's going to be it's going to be a nightmare for everyone. Um, with you know hundreds of boats out back, not having water, and there being water out front, and people wanting to come and just be done with their day, and knowing that they can get to a dock out front and just kind of trying to scoot off. So um we are placing a lot of emphasis on that okay good, uh, good. On, and on the fuel dock as well and just kind of maybe manning up over there for or you know sorry to use that expression but um posting up that's a better one uh over yeah. there um you know with with a lot more frequency uh just because of the people coming in um you know trying to trying to stand off or drop off and you know, that, that may have to be used a little bit different dropping off at some occasions, um, you know, to get the uh, boat ramp going in some kind of flow. And also, um, you know, we will be on the docks giving now uh, informational flyers and, and things like that to people. We have some kayaking ones and stuff like that. Um, some tide charts and, uh, you know, boat uh, harbor maps, um, we're working with the Chamber of Commerce right now in, in getting out, um, you know, kind of informational uh, bags or packets of, you know, where the grants are, where the, the, the town tide chart, you know, I don't know if you remember the bifold that we had um, in previous years, but had a tide chart on the back and listed some restaurants and, thing, and, and stores. Um, so just someone kind of on the docks to uh, greet the people and give them some direction, hopefully. So, yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, and then some uh, some new signage up in uh, on the hardtop in the marina. Um, some you know poster boards and uh, rule signs and things like that. Uh, they've come up with a lot of uh, with Martha's help too. Come up with a lot of great ideas on um, you know how to bring it all together and uh, give people some guidance. Well, when when boats come in, they're packing on where the cars park, you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're parking their vehicles there. And I just see the progression of that during the summer. It's just going to be a huge cluster if boats are parked on, you know, this side of the uh, the yeah. ramp instead of the other side. Even when they come up and, and tie all their crap down, they're pulling off to the left coming up instead of going to the right. Um, in years past, it's always been you come up, the boat ramp, you go out to the right, go down, turn around, and come back up, and then then leave. Uh, now they're parking. Last weekend there was a boat parked in the up by the, uh, the the picket shack in the parking lot instead of down below. Uh, it's just, just all when <clears throat> when people start doing that behavior, it's good to get it now instead of encouraging it later in the season. Yeah, uh, possibly some arrows even coming off the boat ramp or um, definitely some interface with us about, uh, you know, gearing up in line, you know, down, down the pier as opposed to in the beginning where all the cars are parked. That would be uh, one one thing, you know, they all tend to, like you said, they pull up off the boat ramp and start heading for the exit and stop parked behind, uh, you know, seven or eight cars and right. unload their gear, which cuts it down to one lane and then um so maybe when um we can get them they're trying to fix their uh striping machine 
uh, to put a couple arrows in off the boat ramp, you know, headed towards the pier, you know, down the pier. That would probably, you know, at least give them, say like- hey, Wasn't there a sign there at one time on the pole on the right? The signs um, say boat, uh, vehicles and trailers, uh, you know, park. I, I don't know if it says parking or not, but boats, vehicles, you know, down that way. Right. Yeah. So we do have those. Uh, I did kind of start to redo the um, the billboard, you know, where your um, where your business is, the uh, charters. Yeah. Are posted, yeah, yeah. Which, John, that reminds me, you need a new sign up there. Yeah, I know. I've got to get on that. So um, we put a bunch of little signs up there um, until they get filled, too. So they're a lot more obvious and present. Um, for the public to kind of see that, but we could snag one more little sign that's, cause right now they're kind of tucked in where you would nose up with your truck at the end of that, you know, um, alley. And we could kind of make that maybe in more in the forefront and just put that on, um, maybe not the post cause everyone seems to hit the post, but <laughs> you know, somewhere like that. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, uh, anything else in that um, concern category? Oh, looks like things are being addressed for sure. Looks good. Yeah. Yep. Okay, um, the next item is um, dredging. Um, the focus is on area one getting ready for October as well as uh, planning for area two next year. The grant we submitted for funding for area one was supposed to know early to mid June and get an answer from them. Um, the goal is to send out a notice in June to potential bidders and our lobbyist and congressional delegation is still working for us and um, has um, gotten the um, Army Corps office in, in Washington, D.C. to agree to do a review of the denial of the permit for Area 2. So that's good news. Will, you want to add anything to that? I think um, from the, the Harbor Plan, for the dredging, um, one thing I, I think that we should um, probably do, which we have the possible uh, the ability to do now, is send out some uh, informational email blasts to all the users. Um, you know, maybe starting. I, I don't I, I don't know about August first because I might just get lost. Maybe maybe mid August, um, following that up with a September first. Um, you know, just kind of uh, kicking out the information and, and reminding people to, um, you know, to, to move it along and that this is this is going to happen. Um, and we could update them with any information that we want to of, uh, you know, if contracts been awarded, uh, there's a good, um, you know, after the bidding process or whatever, there's a good uh, reminder, you know, whenever that um, happens, um, you know, to take place. Uh, we, you know, we do have that ability and it's only an email. So, uh, and then, then obviously after that, we're going to be um, shuffling those docks right out of there um, with, with the DPW and, and we're working pretty, uh, we're going to be working pretty heavily in that boat ramp area. One thing we're going to do, and we already started is um, we're not going to be renting transient, um, obviously transient slips, but transient moorings either uh, that time of year. What we want to do is start with um, all the commercial people, charter people, um, stuff like that, and get them uh, dockage or moorings up front to not disrupt uh, their livelihoods. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna kick that kick that right to the curb at that point in time, um, right after Labor Day, and start to get um, those people situated in those spots and. Uh, you know, try to try to get through this the best we can. Okay. Um, finally, new business and future concerns. Does anybody have anything? I have new business. 
Okay. Um, shellfish committee. Uh, Nancy was talking about grants and this, that, and everything else in regards to um, the shellfish industry and Wellfleet. Um, if you remember correctly, there's no real plan on it. Uh, I, I believe there has to be a balance between the recreational boaters and the, the amount of grants they give out. If you've ever been up in a Blackfish Creek lately, it's a mess. It, I mean, it's a mess. Um, so, I mean, what's wrong with uh, having a set number of grants and you just give out that amount of grants? When somebody lo loses a grant, it goes back to the natural state. Uh, there was never a plan on the balance of it. Uh, back in the 70s, there was, what, two or three grants on Mayo Beach. Uh, <laughs> you could go out there and you could swim and you didn't have to worry about stepping in netting and everything else. Now the whole stretch of Mayo Beach is all, all uh, aquaculture grants. Um, I'm just saying there's no balance between the recreational boda and the shellfish, the amount of shellfish grants. Yeah, Kevin, 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 can you elaborate a bit about um, Blackfish Creek being a mess? Well, the the the, the channel into Blackfish Creek really isn't isn't marked. Anybody that's gone up into Blackfish Creek will tell you uh, you're going to hit racks. I've had numerous people say that you, they've gone up in there and they they're hitting that and in, in, in racks. That's because they're not marked properly. I mean, that's been a problem for a number of years. Uh, Bill and Alice Araquesa used to complain about that all the time because they live up in there and they have a sailboat. Yeah, that uh, Blackfish Creek has been uh, encroached on by grants for a number of years. And, and Absolutely. If they're, not marked, if they're not marked properly, which is a responsibility of the shellfish department, if they're not marked properly, you're going to be running into stuff. Well, the, this gets to another, well, it's uh, part of the same issue, I guess. Uh, the, uh, the business of, uh, grant extensions, uh, into this new Hidilta property that the town bought, uh, we already have, uh, the chair of the select board who has basically, they, they voted him a, a, an additional, I think, acre. Uh, it hasn't, the, the process of getting it hasn't been completed. He's still got some state permitting or something to, to go, but. Uh, that's right on the corner, the outer corner of, of his grant uh, as you make the turn into Blackfish Creek. What is, what is the solution to getting those racks marked? What are your there ideas? Regulations. They have right. regulations. They just, they don't follow. So how, how do we get them enforced? Nancy. Yeah, that's Nancy. Yeah. Do you, do you want me to invite her to our next meeting for a discussion? That might That'd be, be fine. I, I mean, from, from my point of view, there's a channel in Blackfish Creek. 99% of the people that are up off Olaf Road have no idea about boating for the most part. I believe there should be a mock type of channel the outside buoys should be like red let's say so you have a clear defined path but again <laughs> go up there in low tide and see the amount of shell fishermen up in there yeah. and i don't begrudge anybody a living it's just that there was never a plan in this town to how many grants you were going to give out I think we're, we're talking about um, marking the racks, but also marking the channel. Well, the edge of the edge of their Mark the, the grant grants would be the channel. The edge of the grants, yeah. Right. For, for instance, DeVasto's, you know, if he gets, if he ends up getting that uh, add on, he's gonna need to mark the outer edge of that clearly so that uh, people know not to sail over that. So one thing that, um, I can tell you there, there's a, there's a lot of, um, 
there's a lot of buoys out there and, and it makes for a very, very confusing uh, boating. Um, even myself, you know, you're going through there to do something and, and it's confusing. Yeah. One way that I, I've been uh, talking with uh, trying to address this uh, issue is the problem is Black, Blackfish Creek is deemed non-navigable. Um, even though, you know, we can go in at the tide and everything, but so channel markers, which have come up, won't work uh, because of its non-navigable status. But we can uh, line it with hazard buoys, which is one option. If we mark out some hazard buoys along the edges of that, you know, the person's eye could know to, you know, with the information being put out there, they could know to follow them around into it. Um, you know, just like the rock buoy, you know, here it is, or, you know, it would kind of be a, a quasi channel um, and it would be hazard markers. The other option is, um, which will be suggested, is that with, with any of these grants on the outside and all these changes is to um, ask for them to use their outer uh, markers and you know, they, they have the regulation to be yellow, mark all the four corners and everything. But they, were, they could still be yellow and, and be congruent with that. But if they were like a high flyer or they were double tall, or very different from just a standard yellow ball on just the outside, which would give them a good perimeter around for people to follow instead of going through. Because you, you have to see all the yellow balls, which makes it confusing. But if you had certain ones on the outside marked differently with the same colors, I think that would probably clear up a lot of the navigational, um, you know, confusion in that area. And, you know, one way is that we do it uh, with those markers, but the other way is to ask them to do it when, when they go for that. And, you know, I, I don't think they would be really, uh, you know, against that because, Remember, if a boat goes across their stuff, um, you know it, it's going to cost them a lot of money too. Um, it's going to cost them a lot of a lot of headaches. So, um, you know, I think the feedback on that is pretty good as well to do that kind of thing. And I don't think anyone would really be opposed to to, to any of that. I think it'd be a good idea to invite Nancy to the next meeting and address some of these issues. You know, one, the marking of the channel. But, it, you know, remember here about three or four years ago, um, they approached us about the uh, doing the condos, you know, the tiers. Yeah. And we yeah. went up to a certain height, you know, like on their racks. Yeah. And I, I think that there's a lot of that out there now, too. And, uh, you know, people are cruising over those racks, you know, maybe some of them are a little higher. So I, I think we need to get a determination from Nancy on, you know, one, the marking of the grants there, you know, two, we need to ask her about the plan, you know, uh, the overall plan of shellfish licenses, uh, grant holder licenses, and um, the maintenance of those. And then three, we ought to talk to her about the, you know, the marking of, uh, of the channel you know, with some hazard buoys. I think Will's idea that those corners should be well marked with something different because like you said, those there's yellow buoys all over the place. You know, and these guys use Coke bottles and whatever floats they find for, for markers in, the, in their grants. But if you don't know where the corners are, you could be in the middle of all that junk, you know? Well, it's just like the same thing going over Egg Island. I mean, you go, I mean, oh, yeah. people don't know Egg Island really well, and you go over there and you're going up into the gut there. You know, it, it, you you've got to know what you're doing, or right? because you've got old saw on one side, and then you've got these random buoys on the other side. Aren't um, aren't there regulations requiring them um, to use certain markers, not Coke bottles and other things? Uh <laughs> Yeah, so in, in the in the main season it would be the yellow balls, but in the winter time they would they would have winter markers as well. Um, and a lot of the uh, you know different racks and bags and all the, the gear they use on their grant can be marked with different um, buoys and stuff as well. Is that enforced by Nancy her department? Yeah, they, they've been I know they've been going going after that sort of issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Martha suggested inviting Nancy. 
Um, how do the others feel about that? Do you want me to do it? Yeah, yeah could, fine. could get some <laughs> clarification on things. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Okay. All right. Any other um, new business or future concerns? Okay, if we, um, if we go four weeks, we're looking at June 23rd. Well, it's okay to me. Yeah. Looks, me. Looks good to me. Yeah. yeah. John? Yeah. Looks yeah. Kevin, Will? Yeah. Okay. Why don't we go to June 23rd? I won't be there. I get a charter until 7, 8, 7 p.m. and I won't be back until 8 anyway. Uh -huh. Bring your phone for Christ's sakes. <laughs> nah, I can do that. I'll try. I'll try and make it. I'm tentative. <laughs> um, okay. So what we need now is a motion to adjourn at uh, 8.23. We'll we have a motion. I'll second it. John, uh, did you make the motion? Yeah. Who made the motion? I did. John, okay. I second it. And Martha second. Okay. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a nice Thank night, you. all. Take care. All right. Good job, Will. It really Thanks, is looking Will. good down there. Thank you very much. Night. Night.